Okay, guys, let's take a look at today's lesson. Uh, this unit, unit eight, is our integration, basically integration techniques is a big part of this unit. So before I start with the first new integration technique that we're gonna learn, which is integration by parts, let's review the ones that we already know. Some of you are keeping a list of integration techniques, which is really important. If you don't have that list, you should be doing that list because you'll be given an integral just at random and you'll have a lot of different techniques that you might try. So if you don't remember some of the techniques, that's gonna put you at a disadvantage. So let's kind of write down or be sure we know the, the techniques that we've already learned. One of the first ones that we learned was geometric shapes. That one's still viable. If you have like, if you're gonna integrate a semicircle, then just use the geomet, you know, the formula for area of a semicircle. Um, if you are going to like the linear absolute value, you know, the V, the do a V, just do triangles. All right, so geometric shapes is still a good technique. Formulas, formulas was the second technique that we learned, just using straight formulas. So having all those in our heads can be pretty important. The third technique was use substitution. So we know how to do u-substitution. We're pretty good at it now. Um, once we learned u-substitution, we learned something called algebraic substitution. That's our fourth one. Algebraic substitution was when we did a u-substitution and had an x left over. Remember that? And we had to go back to the original u, uh, the original substitution and solve for x, and then we were able to complete our integral. That was called algebraic substitution. Then um, we learned a technique w that used completing the square. Remember we completed the square in the denominator and it created um, one of the arc functions. Um, also, we that's our fifth one. Fifth one was completing the square. The sixth one is where we would take an integral and split it into two integrals. Um, you know, it might like it, three plus x in the numerator and we would split it into two pieces and do one integral maybe with substitution and the other one like an arc function. We've done those before, just splitting into two integrals. And the seventh and the last one that we um, worked on, have already worked on, is where we would add and subtract a constant in order to split the integral into two integrals. Okay, so those are the ones that we currently know. Um, we're adding to that today a technique called integration by parts. Um, integration by parts is a pretty important, and it looks pretty complex, but we're going to work through it, and it's going to be fine. Um, Y'all are going to be fine with it. So this first part right here, these are the formulas that if you were to read a calculus textbook, that's the formula for how you would do that. That's what it would say. Now, I don't know how many of you go around reading calculus textbooks. It is one of my favorite things to do, but perhaps nobody else in this room likes to just read calculus textbooks. So, uh, but if you did, this is the technique that is widely used, where you have a u and a dv. It's a formula. You have to memorize the formula, uv minus integral v du. When I originally learned this technique, that's how I learned it. And keeping all those straight is a pretty big of a pretty big challenge, especially if you have more than one level that you're required to do. Um, if it's just a one level integration by parts, you know, the formula is, is kind of doable. But if you have more than one level, it gets really complex really quick. So I found there's another technique, and I don't know who created this, but it's genius. I love this technique. It's the tabular method. This is the method that I'm going to teach you. If you just really, really, really want to know this other method, I'm sure you can, you know, Google it and watch a video on YouTube on how to do it. Um, to me, it's um, difficult to remember and very difficult if you have more than one level. So we're going to use the tabular method. Now, this technique works when you have two quantities, two um, functions being multiplied together. Now, of course, it doesn't work all the time, just like we know that all integrals are not possible. I am not going to, just, just say this right now, I am not going to give you an integral that's impossible. It may look impossible, but it's not going to be impossible, okay? There will be a way to do it, and they will not do that to you on the AP test either. They will not give you an integral that's impossible, you know, unless it's uh, one you're going to use your calculator with. It's like a definite integral. Then calculators will, you know, approximate it. So with that, let's talk about um, the table. Let's talk about how the table is set up. So notice um, this, the plus, minus, plus, minus, this pattern would just continue as, as many levels as you need. Uh, this first column goes for derivatives. 
and when you first do this technique you might want to write you know derivatives at the top so you remember first column is derivatives the second column is integrals so in other words you're going to whatever you decide goes here you would take the derivative of and put here and if you need another level you would take the derivative of that and put here and so forth as many levels as you need this whatever you decide to put here is our um, you would integrate this put your answer there and do as many integrations as you need so that's the way the table works um, the way we choose u and dv these are the heads of the columns the way we choose that is we're looking to see that u becomes simpler when we take the derivative of it and dv I can integrate it it's easily integrated there's also an acronym that is quite helpful in determining which goes in which column and that's this L-I-A-T-E really important in fact I put it on the top of my paper I just write the acronym there so that I can glance at it um, if I have a question about which to write where and here's how this acronym works first of all let's talk about what the acronym is L stands for logarithmic a logarithmic function I is for our inverse trig functions you know arctangent so forth A is for algebraic like x squared or 2x plus 5 you know those would be algebraic trig I mean we have no trig functions right sine cosine exponentials would be like 2 to the x or e to the x so those are the types of uh, functions that are represented in this L-I-A-T-E. So here's how we use it. Um, the integrand, if the integrand is a product of two functions from these different categories, which many times it will be, we're going to let u be the function whose category comes first, earlier. So that kind of makes sense. The one earlier one we put in the first column. And notice how the first column we're doing derivatives. What did we learn first? We learned how to do derivatives first, right? We learned derivatives first, then we learned integrals. So hopefully that'll help you keep kind of straight in your head where things go. I learned derivatives first. That's what comes in the first column. I learned integral second. Here, I want the one that occurs earliest to be in my derivative column. All right, so that's the usefulness of the L-I-A-T-E. All right, so the table can be continued using the same pattern. We can do as many levels as, as we are as needed the circled entities are multiplied in front of the integral that's this part right here see how in the formula it's multiplied in front of the integral these circles are what comes outside the integral the last two whatever the last two entries in your columns you're going to multiply them together and I always put like a little arrow here you're going to multiply them together and that's what you're going to integrate so the last two entities are multiplied inside of the integral and then the signs here on the left side just indicate if you're going to be adding or subtracting all right so please note that this sign goes with this diagonal and this sign goes with this diagonal okay get the pattern and this sign goes with this diagonal and then this sign goes with the row straight across All right, um, the arc functions are, I mean, they're going to be popping up left and right. So just for your benefit, I rewrote those formulas here. We've already done a lesson with them and we've already I mean, worked with them quite a bit. But, you know, in case it's just, it was a couple of units ago, in case you have forgotten, I just wrote them here as a reminder because they are back. Okay. So any general questions before I start the problems? And right now, it may not make a lot of sense, but hopefully as I work through the problems, it'll make more sense as to how this technique works. Because th this technique is useful when you have two functions being multiplied together. Usually two functions of different, you know, different types, like here, the L-I-A-T-E. Okay? All right, let's work. Um, I have four examples for us to work, so let's take a look at that. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is write our acronym over here so we can refer to it, the L-I-A-T-E. -I -L -I it's just helpful to have that, to see that. All right, our first problem is we're supposed to integrate x sine x. 
up until this point, we wouldn't be able to do that, right? That's not a u sub. Sure, I could make x u, but I still can't integrate u sine u, so you know we, we can't do it. This technique, this integration by parts, is the technique that we'll use to integrate this. So let's look at what we have. We have something that's algebraic, x, and we have trig. So looking over here, the algebraic comes before the trig. So I'm going to do my chart, and I'm going to put the algebraic function first and the trig function second. And just to remind you, this is the one we do the derivative of, and this is the one we do the integral of. All right, so the derivative of x is 1, and the integral of sine x. In other words, what would I have taken the derivative of to get a positive sine x? A negative cosine, negative cosine x. So what we do, uh, as we finish, that's one level. As we finish each level, we stop, and we look at the bottoms of the columns. If I can, and, and, and just think in your head about these two being multiplied. If I were to multiply the two bottoms right here, 1 times negative cosine, would I be able to integrate that? As soon as the answer is yes, you stop with the chart. Okay? You stop. As soon as it's yes. I've had some students earlier today that just wanted to keep going because they could. All right? Let's, let's not. All right? So as soon as you can integrate it, stop and integrate. So... We know we can integrate the bottom the right here if I multiply these two together. So let's do our pattern. We circle the diagonal, and then these are what I'm going to multiply. So what I do is I write my um, integral off of this table. So the first piece, this is the part outside of the integral, is going to be negative, so this is equaled, negative x cosine x. That's from my diagonal. That's outside the integral. This bottom part, it's negative times negative, so it's going to be positive. 1 times cosine is cosine. Okay, And my last task is to actually do the integral. Negative times negative will give me positive. Right? Okay. So this piece we just copy down the part outside the integral just uh, comes along it's part of the answer all right so we ask ourselves what would we have taken the derivative of to have gotten a positive cosine a positive sine so plus sine x plus c and there's our very first integration by parts very first okay we okay You can go backwards and do that if you like. You would well. You just have to go back and do it. I don't. I don't have time to to go back and do it because you have product rule and all kind of stuff you have to do. So I don't have to, time to go back, but that it will work. All right. Let's look at our next one. So our next one, we have. An, so first of all, we look at it. We don't have any technique to be able to solve it, so we're going to use our new technique, integration by parts. Um, I have an algebraic piece and an exponential piece. So let's set up. Right, so according to our acronym, algebraic comes first. So x squared comes first, and e to the x is second. All right, so let's do a level. So derivative of x squared is 2x. The integral of e to the x is e to the x. I stop. Look at the bottoms of the columns. Let's multiply them together in our head. If we had to integrate 2x e to the x, would we be able to do so? No. So we keep going. We need another level. Another level. Okay? So the derivative of 2x is 2. The integral of e to the x is e to the x. We stop. Look at the bottom columns. If we were to multiply 2 times e to the x, would we be able to integrate it? Yes, so we stop. We just need two levels here. So let's draw our diagonals. So we have this and this. And then we multiply the bottom two to put inside the integral. All right, so this is going to equal x squared e to the x minus 2x e to the x plus integral of 2e to the x dx. 
That is just copying from my table, um, writing my expression, my integral expression, which I promise you takes less than half the time if you were to do it the classic old school way of the formula over and over and over and over again. It's just much quicker. So now we integrate this. What's the integral of 2e to the x? 2e to the x. Don't we love e to the x? Isn't it like one of the most awesome things? All right, so we have x squared e to the x minus 2x e to the x plus 2e to the x plus c. All right, got our plus c. Don't forget your plus c. All right, is that okay? So we've done one with one level and one with two levels. Um, yeah, actually, and on some multiple choice questions, they would factor e to the x out and leave it like that. You can do that if you like, or you can leave it like that. Um, either form is simple as possible. Uh-huh. Okay, so the signs on the table, this, this sign is going to be attached to this diagonal. This sign is attached to this diagonal. And this sign is attached to the bottom line. Okay, so the, the signs on the side <coughs> are attached to the top of the diagonal that they belong to, or the very bottom sign goes to the bottom row. Um, yes, okay, we okay? All right, now it is possible. Now, this third type, so I'm, I like to show you variety. All right, this third type, um, a lot of students have a difficult time with. Although, really, we're really not integrating here, which I'm thinking, wow, students should have a great time with this. But it's a real, um, it's a pattern that is difficult for some students to recognize. So, I'm just telling you that ahead of time. This is when we get on a loop, a never-ending loop. Okay? All right, so... Here, let's, let's think through this before we start. Um, if when I take the derivative or integral, doesn't matter, of e to the x or e to the 2x, it's just going to keep having more e stuffs, right? More and more. If I take the either way, derivative or integral of sine x, it's just going to keep going, sine, cosine, right? It's just going to keep going. So it's never going to stop. Um, in this case, what we do is we complete the table until we get back where we started from with an e to the 2x and a sign. Now, there's going to be different constants all around. Where I'm not talking about the constants. I'm talking about the actual functions. So, when you see something like this, and it involves, it, I mean, typically involves an exponential and a trig function. That's what you're going to see with the never-ending loop. So, let's start, and we'll walk through this. Okay, so according to our acronym, which of these am I going to put first? The sign. So I put sine x first and e to the 2x second. Okay, so recall this is my derivative column. So the derivative of sine is cosine. The integral of e to the 2x, 1 half e to the 2x. Now this disturbed students earlier today. Let me remind you how I got the 1 half. I did a little baby u sub in my head. Right, because u would be 2x, right, and du is 2dx, and then I divide the 2 over, I get 1 half. That's where the 1 half came from. It's a little baby u sub. Yes. This isn't, we're not doing derivatives here, dear. We're doing integrals. Integrals are the second column. <coughs> okay. All right, so I have a cosine in e to the 2x. I'm not done. I, need, uh, I, I stop when I get what I started with. It's like a loop. We just keep going until we get back where we started. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine. Then my integral of 1 half e to the 2x is, yep, 1 fourth e to the 2x. All right, I am, I've come back around to where I have a sine and an e to the 2x. Again, we're not worried about the constants. I stop. All right, here's where we stop. So we still do our same pattern, our diagonals. The only thing different that we do here is we actually, and I'm, I want you to do this when you first learn it. Now, once you get the hang of it, you're not going to have to do this all the time. But when you first learn it, we need to write down the first expression. So we're going to say integral e to the 2x sine x dx equals. 
Okay. Notice up here, I used the equal sign, but I didn't rewrite the integral. I used the equals, I didn't rewrite. Here, with a loop, with a loop, you need to rewrite the integral, and I'll show you why in just a moment. All right, so let's write down the stuff from the table. So we have, again, the plus goes with this, the minus goes with that. We have 1 half e to the 2x sine x minus 1 fourth e to the 2x cosine x minus, so we have a subtraction sign here, 1 fourth integral e to the 2x sine x dx. Now let me let you get caught up with me, get that written down, and then we're going to talk about what we have. No, we're not done. Not done. We're not done. Okay. So, what I want you to look at, let's, let's think about, we have a variable in here that's like no variable we've seen before. Okay, I want you to think about this little guy, this whole piece right here, this integral piece is being a variable. I have another one over here, right? I have one of these variables, and I have a negative one-fourth of these variables. Why don't we solve for it, right? Add one-fourth over there. Bam, we're done. There's no integration involved. We're going to get what that equals. Are you with me? So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to add it over, and that's going to give me how many of these? It's going to give me five-fourths of these new type of variable that we've never seen before, integral e to the 2x sine x dx equals 1 half e to the 2x sine x minus 1 fourth e to the 2x cosine x. Almost done. I need to solve for that um, lovely new variable, so I've got to get rid of the 5 fourths, which I would multiply by 4 fifths. So let's do that. So we have the integral e to the 2x sine x dx equals, so we multiply by 4 fifths, and we get 2 fifths e to the 2x sine x minus 1 fifth e to the 2, come on, e to the 2x cosine x, and that's my answer. Oh, yep, plus c. There we go. We, well, we did. We really did, right, <laughs> with the little quotes. We did integrate. Um, so the loops are, are kind of a complicated pattern, but really it's just the complicated pa pattern that's hard. It's not the integration because we really don't, do any integration by hand, right? We just solve for the integral, which is just beautiful. Oh, that's so awesome. All right, last one. Now, we do not have a formula for integral of ln x. We don't. We can do the derivative of ln x, but we don't have a formula for it. This is a type where um, occasionally, and I'm just going to say occasionally, you can treat something like this as one times one times natural log x, and we're going to in do integration by parts. Okay, it works with ln x. It also works with the um, arc functions, if you need to integrate like arc tangent. It'll work with that. Um, but other than that, I haven't really seen the one times used very often. I can't think of another case. So let's, now, when I do my table, I'm not going to put the 1 as a derivative, right? Because if I take the derivative of 1, it's going to be 0. It's not going to help me. But if you're going to use this technique, if you're going to use the 1, it always goes in the second column. So no matter what it's with, it always goes in the second column. So we have ln x in our first column and 1 in our second column. So the derivative of ln x is 1 over x. The integral of 1 is x. So we stop and we ask ourselves, if we multiplied that together, would we be able to take the integral of it? Yes. yes. Okay. It would just be, yeah, if we multiply these together, we get a 1 and the integral of 1 is x. So yes, we can do that. So we do our pattern. Now, one thing that I want to point out here, we've got these bounds and there's a place that students get a little tripped up here. So as I go through it, we're going to talk about it. All right. So I write this out, x, ln x 
minus integral of one dx from one to two. Okay, we just all agreed that the integral of one is x. So x ln x minus x. Here's the thing, this one to two, these bounds, also apply to the thing in front of the integral. They also apply to that. Now some textbooks will do them separately and write the one to two on this and the one to two on this. Doesn't really matter to me how you do it. I prefer to just lump it all together so I don't forget anything. All of it I have to evaluate from one to two. Okay, so please don't forget. All right, so let's do that. So I sub a two in and I get two ln two minus two. Okay, minus with a bracket, sub the one in, one ln one minus one. All right, so let's simplify. Yeah, this guy right here, ln one is just zero, right? This guy right here is zero, so he's really gone. So I have negative two minus a minus one, which is negative two plus one, which is a negative one, right? So I have two ln two minus one. Now, I will tell you that, no, hold, I will tell you that, so they would not write that as the multiple choice answer. Does anybody see what else they would do? They would do our, their natural log rules. They love them. They would take the two up, right? It would be ln two squared, which we know is ln four. ln four minus one would be your multiple choice answer if this were on the AP test. Okay, yes. No, because why? Why don't we need a C? Because it's a definite integral, because it would have netted out, right? We'd done plus C and minus C, it would have been gone. Any other questions? We okay?